Hey there, my name is John Ho. I am an artist based in London. In this new series of videos, I'm going to be sharing some painting tips and also some of the techniques that I've learned over the years. So today in this video, I'm going to show you how I stretch my own canvas at home on a budget. This will involve a bit of time sourcing your own material and some minor DIY, but it's very easy to follow. So without further ado, here's a list of tools that you'll need. So the first thing you'll need is a canvas plier. Make sure that it is just for canvas stretching. The best ones to use is the ones with like rubber pads on the teeth. You don't want to use the ones without and also you don't want to use normal pliers because they will rip the canvas. The second thing you'll need is the staple gun and it's very self-explanatory. It's what you use to stabilize the canvas. The third thing you will need is a staple remover. So if you need to readjust the canvas, you can use this to remove the staple. And the next thing you need is a board. So I use a 25 millimeter thick MDF board, which stands for medium density fiber board. The reason that I use it instead of using a stretcher or a frame is because it's just so much simpler, it's much cheaper. The thing about MDF boards is it tends to be quite heavy to handle and also is prone to bend from moisture. The thing is in the UK we don't really get that problem as much. Also if you're not going to use this for, for professional setting then this is a cheap and easy alternative. And how much cheaper do you ask? Well I've worked out the maths. So with the size of my canvas is customized so the height is 92 centimeters by 56 centimeters wide. So with a one meter canvas, this should be enough for five to six paintings if you're working in the size that I'm working with. And this works to the total of 60 pounds. With a pre-stretched canvas, the price point is about 30 pounds and the dimension is 24 by 36 inches, which is not really what we're looking for, but for comparison's sake, this is the closest amount. And in terms of getting your painting custom framed, we're looking at at least 40 pounds to 60 pounds for just one painting. So when we convert all of these numbers, I would definitely go for my method. If you are a painter that produces at least five or 10 paintings per year, uh, it's just a long-term economical investment. Now that we have everything, I'm going to show you how we're going to stretch our paintings. So here is the initial setup. I have all my tools on this side and here is my painting. I have the MDF board right here. First, we're gonna lay down the painting face down with protective layer to make sure the painting is dry. So I'm going to lay down this piece of plastic. Here's my painting facing downwards. I'm going to put this board on top. So obviously before you do this, you have to make sure the painting is dry. And then I'm going to lay the board on top roughly where it would be. Now we are going to lift the painting to check if the corners line up. So what you're going to do now is you're going to flip the painting up and with the board and have a look to see if the painting's lined up to the corners and to the sides. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a staple in this position, so right in the middle, not too close to the edge because that would fray and the staple won't hold the canvas onto the wood. So I'm going to do it in the midpoint. So next step, once we're done with this side, we're going to move to the opposite side. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use a canvas plier to do this to make sure that I pull. Now when you're in a good position, you can staple it. Now I'm going to flip this over to check the positioning. So you can see here, it's lined up quite nicely. I have these kind of remaining bits that I can fix with painting it over later on. So what we're trying to do next is going to do the side. We're now moving on to the sides. We're going to do the same thing. I think that's pretty good. Put a staple down here. And then to the other side, I'm going to flip it over. So this looks perfect. On this side, it could be a problem because the edge is here and we have this much to stretch. So I think we might have to take the whole thing off again to move the position more towards this way to make sure that the picture is right in the middle. This is quite a tedious process, but you have to get this right. Okay, let's flip this over. I'm pretty happy with this. 
So the next step is going to be the corners. So what you want to bear in mind is that it will create a folded corner on top and it's often hidden from plain sight. So if I have a portrait painting like this, here these two sides will be the side that people won't see when you face the painting front on. So ideally that's where the corner is going to be. So if it's a landscape painting that you have, the bottom is going to be on the horizontal side. So the corners will be hidden on below. On my painting is going to be on this side. So you take this bit on the outside, you tuck this in to the bottom of the top. You flip this inwards to go over what you had before. It should look something like this. And you might see that this is kind of coming out from the frame and you don't want that. You want it to line up like this to the side. And you wiggle this bit inwards like that, you roll it and make it go straight down. So we're going to put a staple on here. Sure, I would do another staple here just to make this not fly around. And I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other corners. And here is the final result. I hope this video was helpful and is going to help you save some money in the long run. If you are hoping to get the exact tools that I've used, I've left the links below in the description box. These are affiliate links, meaning that I will make some money. It will help me continue making these videos. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, subscribe for more. And also leave a comment below if you have any questions and let me know how you get on. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.